All right, guys, this is about a 19 inch diameter white oak tree. It's got a nice veneer log in the butt and uh, some really nice lumber logs after that. Why is that not focusing? There we go. The one, okay guys, I went today and bought a brand new 592 XP. The one I bought about three, four months ago has had starting issues and I found a, a fuel line that was screwed up on it. You, you heard me talk about it in a video and uh, it didn't repair it. So I took it in, they told me it was all under warranty. They're gonna replace every fuel line on the saw and they're going to adjust the mapping or something like that with the computer. Either way, I walked out with a brand new saw, a little later model. It actually has a different fuel line in it. I took the cover off and looked before I walked out with it and uh, things started third pull. And uh, if you look right here, it's maintaining fuel in here. And uh, the other one, you couldn't get it to fill up like that. So there was obviously an air leak somewhere. But anyways, uh, brand new saw. We're getting ready to do some cutting. So we'll see how it goes. All right, guys, this is about a 19 inch diameter white oak tree. It's got a nice veneer log in the butt and uh, some really nice lumber logs after that. And it's a prime candidate for a spur cut. So gentleman that goes by the name of Full House Bucking asked me to do an in-depth explanation of what a spur cut is. So when I say spurs, I'm referring to these buttress roots sticking out of the tree. You know, you can see that sticks out about 12 inches from the tree right there. So those are the spurs. So what we're gonna do with this tree um, is we're gonna use the spurs to directionally fall it safely. So what we're gonna do now is first we're gonna identify which way this tree wants to fall. And I'm taking the camera up straight. You can see the trees leaning out to the right. That would also be the south. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna find two spurs on the front of it and we're gonna leave those holding and we're gonna find two spurs in the back and we're gonna leave those holding. So that's gonna be one spur right there. Not this middle one, but this spur right here will be our next spur. So you'll see me cut these and then I'll stop and explain and we'll drop this tree. And what'll happen is we'll end up falling this tree with no holding wood and no fiber pulled and it'll come down safely. Oh, and the other reason I wanna tell you guys, the other reason we're gonna do it this way, we got this little cottonwood tree here, which honestly, if I'm being honest with you, I don't care about it. It's a little cottonwood tree. In the area of the world I'm in, there is no value in cottonwood, but it doesn't mean we need to destroy it. So we have that tree. And then off to the right, we got a little red oak, which we're probably gonna end up sacrificing. It's a very unhealthy penny tree anyway. And we've got this little cherry here. The, the right side of that cherry, if you look, has woodpecker holes in it two feet off the ground. So it's not a very healthy tree. It's never gonna grow into anything. But the left side, maybe it will, maybe it won't. It's hard for me to say. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a time traveler. I can't predict that. But what I can say is we're gonna fall this tree in the safest way for these three trees and the safest way to fall, you know, to get this tree on the ground. So, let's see what Okay guys, you saw me just bore the front of this tree out leaving two spurs holding. So on the left side of the tree, you can see that where I came out there, back to the front, the side, this is the heavy side where the tree wants to fall and you can see I came out right there. So all that's holding is your holding wood from about right here to about right here. Okay, and that's a straight cut. Same thing on this side. You can see it's, it's cut to right there and it's cut right here. So 
from a top view, it's basically just holding this wood here. So if I cut this off, there's nothing else holding in the front. I stuck my bar out over here. So now we've got three posts holding and the back quarter of the tree still holding. So now I'm gonna go around the back side to the opposite side of the tree and I'm gonna cut all that up so we end up with the four posts total. take it all right guys so what we end up with here this is the side the tree this is the direction the tree wants to fall right the way i'm standing okay so we have a spur right there we're going to go ahead and cut that off first this spur will be number one then we'll walk over here this will be spur number two right there then we'll come back this direction cut off spur number three then we'll walk around all the way to the opposite side and cut off spur number four so that's the, the procedure here. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna trim up the butt of this tree. This spur right here is not holding anything, but I'm gonna go ahead and get it trimmed up so when this thing hits the ground, I don't have to make any more cuts. All right, here we go. <laughs>
All right, guys, first thing, first tree with this brand new 592. Cut awesome, very excited about it. It's a little bit upgraded from the one that I bought three months ago. Um, couldn't be more pleased with this saw. So that's first thing. Second thing is, you can take a look at this tree. Came off the stump, it's flat, it's beautiful. No damage, there's a little bit of a rod issue right here. Uh, let me get it to focus. A little bit of a rod issue, but that couldn't be avoided. You know, that's got nothing to do with me. All right, here's our stump. You can see that our front, the first uh, the first one we cut off was right here, okay? This wasn't holding at all. You can see that it was undercut. Here's our second, second spur. Come back over here, here's our third spur. That's our third one. The reason we didn't cut this spur completely off, you can see I left a little bit of overlapping wood right there. And the reason I left that there was, I wanted to steer this tree a little bit to the right. Um, that's not, <laughs> Uh, what the average timber cutter would do, but that is why you see right here There was an overlapping cut that left a little bit of holding wood and that was what the purpose of that is And then here's our last hinge that we cut off. This was our you know our trigger or whatever word you want to use so uh, If you like this type of stuff, please subscribe to the channel and uh, We thank you guys so much All right guys, this is kind of like a little extended section. There's our cottonwood tree. We talked about thing did not get touched at all and there's our little red oak that we don't really care that much about, but you can take a look at it. It's in great shape. And those cherries I talked about at the start, the double cherry, uh, it totally, totally wiped them out, but take a look at it, guys. Totally rotten pieces of junk, okay? So had these been healthy trees, this tree could have could have maneuvered more around it because of the spur cut. And uh, the fact that these trees were totally rotten pieces of garbage, you know, just kind of kind of goes to show how... Uh, how awesome this cut is that it took out the junk trees it saved out our tree without pulling any fibers and the cottonwood even though it's not a valuable tree and the red oak or pin oak whatever you want to call it are in great shape so there you have it guys 